So here in this problem, we are provided with the value of sine theta. That's positive 12 over 13. Uh, the condition that theta is going to lie in the second quadrant. Now we will need to find out the value of secant theta plus tangent theta. So let's begin. So we have, so let's first run, note down whatever we've been provided with. So here we are uh, given sine theta. So that's equals to positive 12 over 13. Now we needed to find out the value of secant theta. For that, we will need the value of cosine theta. So we know that we know there's a standard trig identity, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. That's equals to what? So cosine theta can be obtained by taking uh, plus minus square root of one minus sine squared theta. So we'll plug in the value of sine theta with 12 over 13. That's going to give us so we have plus or minus uh, square root of 1 minus 12 squared is 144 divided by 13 squared is 169. So this is going to give us when you solve this, we're going to get a value 5 over 13. So this is the value of cosine theta, but we are getting two values of cosine theta. One is positive 5 over 13 and the other is negative 5 over 13. Out of here, we only have to uh, consider one value for that. We'll have to understand the quadrant system. So we will consider our Cartesian coordinate system. So in this plane, we are dividing it into four equal parts, which gives us the first, second, third, and fourth quadrant. We are going in the anti-clockwise fashion. So in the first quadrant, where theta lies between 0 and pi over 2 radians, all trig functions are going to be positive. In the second quadrant, where theta lies between pi over 2 and pi, only the sine and the cosecant function so that's going to be positive, rest are going to be negative. In the third quadrant with theta lying between pi and 3 pi over 2, the tangent function and the cotangent functions are going to be positive, rest are going to be negative. And finally in the fourth quadrant with theta lying between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, the cosine and the secant functions are going to be positive, rest are going to be negative. Now clearly it's mentioned here that we are in the second quadrant. So in the second quadrant only sine and cosecant functions are positive. That means we'll have to consider the negative value of cosine theta. So cosine theta will be negative 5 over 13. Since we have the value of cosine theta, we can immediately obtain the value of uh, secant theta. That's because secant function, uh, secant of theta is the reciprocal of the co cosecant theta by definition. So secant theta is one of a cosine theta. This will be equals to negative 13 over 5. So we have obtained the value of secant theta. So we'll use this. So let's box it for the moment. Next, we need the value of tangent theta. So we already are given with the value of sine theta. So sine theta is positive 12 over 13. And we have obtained cosine theta. So cosine theta is negative 5 over 13. To find out the tangent theta function, all we have to do is take the sine function and divide it by the cosine function because that's the definition of the tangent function. It's the ratio of sine over cosine. So 12 over 13 divided by negative 5 over 13 is going to give us negative 12 over 5. So this is the value of tangent theta. So we have obtained the value of tangent theta as well as secant theta. Now finally, we can solve our problem. So secant theta plus tangent theta, that's the value we need to find. So this will be equals to negative 13 over 5 minus 12 over 5. So this is going to give us negative 25 over 5. So 5 times 5 is 25. So our final value is going to be negative 5.